Good evening, everyone. How's everyone doing today? We're everyone. back, and it is Be a School Live. Richard, how are you doing this week? Yeah, good, good, good. Just making sure we haven't got any echo. There we go. That's cool. That's. I was I was worried it was my end again. Then that was my uh, trick last week, yeah, wasn't it? Who it was? I think that was me this time. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And how are you doing, James? And of course, we've got Lucy with us this week. Welcome, Lucy. Yeah, not too bad at all. Lucy managed to get out of uh, work early today, so uh, yeah, yeah, got both of us. Nice. So let's get into the beer, shall we? Before we do anything else, that's the important bit. Rich, do you want to introduce us to the style we're judging this week? So just to start with the beer, we have a DDH IPA. We've usually done like a whole some bit version of that. DDH is one of those acronyms that means 101 different things to different people. Uh, <laughs> this is from Sure Shot, who are a relatively new Manchester brewery. Uh, from a brewer who was with Marble and Cloudwater before the places people know. So what we're calling this is we're calling it a, a hazy IPA, so style 21C, uh, which is effectively it called hazy IPA, but most people just call it New England uh, IPA. I mean, so we'll go through the details of the style as we get into it. This, I believe, is a fairly early one from this brewer, beer from this brewery. Um, so we'll see what it's like. So let's get the priorities right and get some beer into glasses. Cheers. 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 Well, it's not flowing straight out the top of the can, which is a good start. <laughs> We get dramatic opening noises with cans, especially with four of us. No, I quite like that. <laughs> well, it's certainly cloudy. Yeah, certainly carved. Oh, it smells good. It smells pretty. So, should we take it? It smells good. It does. So, where are we starting then? Are we starting with aroma, or do you want to uh, do it another way? So we should start with aroma as, as usual. I mean, as, as usual, I had a quick look at what it looks like just to get an idea of the head, uh, the bubble size to start with yeah, uh, before diving into the aroma as quickly as possible. So through the description, we should have intense hop aromas with stone fruit, tropical fruit, citrus, and other fruity qualities, not grassy or herbal, clean, neutral, grainy, or light bready malt in the background, no caramel or toast, Absence of any malt character uh, is a fault. Uh, neutral to fruity fermentation character, esters from yeast and hops should not clash. Creamy, buttery, or acidic aroma is inappropriate. Light alcohol aroma optional. Nice. So I'm not sure who's joining us tonight. So if you're in chat, say hello. So we know you're there. Apparently there's six people. All right, what are people getting for this then for aroma? Let's talk about the hops, shall we? What? Pineapple. Definitely pineapple. Full on pineapple. From the, when you open the can, that was the first thing you got. Yeah. So for aroma, we're talking about the malt, the hops, the esters, and any other aromatics. And I'll just say it again, and I keep banging on about this. We're talking about what you're getting, what type of it, and how much. So instead of, if you can think, like we've just said pineapple. So if you're in chat, give us um, an intensity descriptor for it, for instance. If you're getting pineapple, how strong a pineapple are you getting? Or if you're getting something else, tell us what you're getting. But yeah, I can definitely go pineapple. A bit of pear as well, maybe, like conference type pear, not overly sweet. Not pear drop, though. No, not pear no. drop. Possibly. Yeah. So we've got a general tropical from Steve. Um, do, you, do you want to see if you can drive any further? I mean, tropical fruits is quite, is, is quite a difficult one to break down, partially because you don't eat them very often. It's mm. uh, eating more than the odd mango and pineapple, um, which is always a good idea if you can get hold of them. Yeah, I mean, when I, when I start thinking tropical, what I tend to do is start running through fruit names in my head it's like so is it pineapple is it mango is it passion fruit what am i getting and i start thinking that and then as i get to the right thing it normally goes ding in my head and it's like yeah that's what i'm getting and then it's yeah. like how strong am i getting it yeah 
there. Sometimes it's nice this time of the year to go, go, around, go around the market and grab some tropical fruit and just get update your palate on it. Yeah. Just being, being able to, the, the, to nail some of the less, the less obvious ones is quite fun. Richard says hi in the chat. Hi, Richard. How are you doing this week? There's a bit of a slight um, spice thing going on as well. Um, it's I've not honed in on something yet. It's quite a generic hop spice at the moment, but there's certainly a little bit of that there. And when it was straight out of the can, um, I was finding that the intensity of the hops, it almost burned slightly on the nose. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I only poured half the can so far, and I can certainly agree I am getting... I am getting something intense like that out of the can. It's not so it's not so obvious in the glass. Oh yeah. Richard says, isn't this last week's? No, last week was uh, what did we do last week? Coffee yeah. Stout. Coffee stout, the Hitachino espresso. Oh there you go. Rich beat me to it. He's answered in chat. <laughs> I was on last week's, though, if that's uh, what's confusing you. <laughs> <laughs> could be. Could be that's what's confusing him. Oh, yeah, that's that's really nice. So one other thing to think about on when thinking about things like tropical fruit is the level of ripeness of it. Uh, I quite often with beers like this, you're almost getting the sort of bruised, overripe aromas of some of these fruits. If you've just left them in the fruit bowl for months, well, if that ever happens. Hmm. <laughs> and there are different um, aromas for things like green mango. So an underripe mango gives you a much more almost citrusy um, aroma. Uh, yeah, but sort of down the grapefruit um, yeah. sort of alley. It's not... Um, like lemon, there's maybe a bit of orange, but sort of in the more like blood orange mm. um, sort of realm. Uh, apparently, reloading the page helps. Where he's now in, in, in this <laughs> last week. <laughs> Time machine. It's amazing how fast a week can go. <laughs> uh, Steve has called out sweet peach. Yeah, yeah, I keep going with that. Yeah. yeah. So are people getting any of the the, the, the malt aromas in there at all? Any, any bready notes, any any of the unwanted ones like caramel or toast or whatever? No, nothing overly strong malt, no. I, I am getting a slight um, breadiness, but it, it, it's sort of like um, cooked flour. You know when you've got uh, flour on the outside of a loaf of bread and that catches slightly, it's... it's it's that sort of thing for me. That's a very good description, actually, yeah. F sort of flowery farmhouse uh, loaf, that flower on the outside type of thing, yeah, I, I can see that. David's joined us. Oh, Richard says he only watched last week's last night, so it's a week in 24 hours. I've had days like that. That's <laughs> terribly <laughs> So, yeah, um, David, welcome. We've cracked open the beer. We're just talking about the aroma. We've um, started talking about tropical fruit, uh, getting people to hone in onto what type of fruit they're getting, how intense it is, how ripe it is, things like that. And we've just started talking about malt. So you haven't missed much at all. So Steve says he's getting some sort of West Coast style dankness on the, on, on the nose. So dankness is one of those terms that means means many things to many people. Um, I could go with the sort of herbal end of there a bit. That could be what I was picking up as like a hot spice earlier on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I think that work herbal, maybe slightly piney. I think works better than spicy for me. Yes. Piney, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. something spicy. I, I mean, uh, certainly, as Rich says, when it comes to what people are calling dankness, there is um, there there is a wide range of things from the. Um, smell you get walking around certain areas of big cities to um 
to a very nondescript herbal piney type thing. Um, I recently had um, Heady Topper, and that was quite dank in that way as well. Yeah, I've also heard people use it for like like a woodland, which is often a mix of piney and earthy. And the, yeah, it's one of those things you, you can use it, but you just need to be, be a little bit careful that it means what you, that it's going to reflect, especially with an exam, what the proctors are likely to say, because um, they're they're more likely to use some something a little bit more specific. Yeah. Oh, good Hi. one from uh, David just come in. Unfortunately, I'm still waiting for it to update on my other thing so that I can show it on the screen. Come on, H2R graphics. There we go. So David's definitely getting ripe peach, but also getting something light and citrusy. And I like that. I'm certainly getting a citrus note in the background. I haven't like you. You're saying not orange or lemon. I haven't pinned down exactly what it is either. So, I mean, it's one of those ones where it would be nice to go better than citrusy, but I really can't blame you because I can't put my finger on it either. I quite like the little, like, grapefruit, so I was heading yeah. in a grapefruity direction. And definite pine or cut grass at the end retronasally. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely getting some pine. Um, I've never been good at getting cut grass in beer, so you could well be right, and I'm just not getting it. Yeah, I think there is a bit of grassiness here. I was waiting for somebody to call that one out. Um, not a lot. Um, there's just a little bit of that sort of, yeah, newly cut grass sort of aroma. But yeah, some some great, um, great insight there. But yeah, I'm definitely getting more of that piney as the beer's starting to warm a bit. Yeah. So some of the things one people have called out recently, uh, any thoughts on the sort of levels of the, I mean, I think I'm quite happy to call the right peach and then the tropical fruits, moderate to high, if not just high. Yeah, high, definitely the pineapple, it's very pineapple forward. Yeah. The grain uh, aspect to it, what, what I can detect is very low though. It's um, hidden behind those other uh, punchy um, hop uh, aromas. That's one of the things that does make it difficult, especially when you've got um, something at the intense end of the scale, like the hop aroma in here. Actually detecting the stuff that's in there at lower levels does become more and more difficult. I mean, that's where I tend to like using the um, phrase, something like um, intense tropical f fruit hop aromas dominate the beer, making it difficult to blah de blah de blah de blah. Because uh, they also like you to fill up the space, so don't be afraid to use words. <laughs> oh, yes. yes. David was pointing at the, the description on the side of the can. Uh, 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 the a liquid fruit salad mouth vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Let's tip the unopened one. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm probably... I could go with mango, though. I would, would put it right mm. at the forefront. Um, there's, there's other tropical fruits in there as well. I think it's closer to papaya. Yeah. 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 It's sort of a long time since I've had a papaya, so what I remember them to taste yeah. like. <laughs> yeah. Smell like. I mean, yeah. I like that pulpy bitter citrus because that's a good distinguishing factor is, like, you can get that really bright... Uh, intense citrus juice type character from the flesh or that more bitter pulpy one so that's always a good one to bring up if you get it okay so let's talk about oh hang on did anyone get any esters or whatever from yeast I think these ones are quite difficult, and obviously quite a lot of other ideas to separate hop and ester. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, it, it is hard to do that. Uh, what else does it say? So creamy, buttery, or acidic aroma is inappropriate. So has anyone got anything to say about any of that? Um, remember, if you're planning on sitting the exam, you're not just talking about what is there. 
you're talking about what isn't there as well. Uh, mm. If it gets called out in the style guide, it's always good to mention those things when you're filling in your feedback. I'm getting previous <laughs> um, retro nasal, but um, some of that could be the just my mind playing with the, uh, the mouthfeel. <laughs> um, jumping ahead a bit, but yeah. Could be. Richard's, <laughs> Richard's getting acetone at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's really, really not going to help at all. <laughs> yeah, it takes me back to some of the competitions we've judged at where it was in less than ideal environments. Uh, were you there that time at the UK National at Wiper and True where they were brewing a wet hot beer right next to one of the tables? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, oh, dear. That yeah, was you know, the back of breweries have either, either smelt of whatever they brewed last or cleaning products. Yeah, we did have a bit of that at the last Welsh, didn't we? There was a little bit of... Um, actually, it might have been um, parasitic. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, should we start right. getting some scores down for this out of 12? So, 12 points. What are we scoring it based on how close to the style guide your descriptions have been? Was there anything there that shouldn't be? Was stuff that should be there missing? What are you going to score it from 12? Um, while you get your scores, it is, as much as we, we, we giggle at having to judge beer in inappropriate circumstances, it's one of the things that you do have to be aware of is whether the thing you're smelling is actually the beer or something else. Um, not usually, we don't usually have smell, smelly judges, but it could be the brewer going past eating a sandwich mm. um, or the, someone making something or a, a, a tanker or something unloading outside. We do end up judging competitions, mostly in breweries, which can be quite aromatic places in and of themselves. We, we do our best to try and cut it down, but you have to be aware of what's going on around you. Uh, another common one, especially at places like the UK National, where there used to just be a load of fresh bread dumped for lunch, um, you'd normally get people describing a lot more um, bread crust and toast type aromas after lunch than before. Uh, all right, so another comment from David. Can't detect any clear esters, but again, the intense hop aromas could be covering more subtle yeast character. Uh, tend to use verdant yeast. Yeah, verdant's quite good for this. Yeah, I'd, I'd be interested in actually using that verdant yeast on something clean to work out what is actually yeast derived off it. Um, mm. So I've only ever used it in yeah this style. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. All right, so we're not getting much on scores from chat. So to the panel, out of 12, what would you be scoring it, Rich? Oh, there's not an awful lot to knock this one down on. I mean, I'm getting a little bit of grassiness. Um, and, yeah, I'm not getting much malt, but that's not a problem in this sort of style. Um, yeah, no no clashing and none of, none of the off flavours. So I'd, I'd probably be in a 10, 11 sort of area here. James, yeah. Lucy, do you um, mind? Yeah, I got 11 as well. Sort of very minimal malt, if at all. Um Cool, yeah. that's good. It tells me that I can put Lucy on the spot for a score. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, 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 I, I'd agree. It's there's um, it's called out that absence of uh, any malt character is a fault here, and it's so much digging to find the malt character that I... If you weren't looking for it, you I'd, wouldn't find it. Yeah, I'd want to just a touch more, just a touch more. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, that's a good call. So, yeah, probably closer to 10 than 11. We've got, yeah, 10 in from Steve... Uh, 10 or 11 in from David, uh, knocking the mango declared, but yeah. Um, normally with these, you wouldn't get any description mm -hmm. uh, beyond the fact that it's this style. So bonus stuff written on the can, and they even tell us what the hops are, I think. Yeah, it does. It's got the list of them there, which is always nice to see on a commercial beer because it's like when you try the beer and think, I really like that, it gives you think to aim at to get those... I mean, obviously, process has a big impact as well, but at least it gives you the starting sort of point for the ingredients. Um, for me, it would probably be a 10. Uh, as has already been called out, the 
grain I'm getting is very, very subdued. Um, I'd say more so than just in the background because you really do have to look for it. Uh, lightly bready, grainy or neutral. I mean, for me, the flower comment was good. Uh, beyond that, it is quite neutral. Normally, it would be quite... Um, quite often, this style of beer, it's almost an uncooked dough type character, mm -hmm. but I'm not getting any of that this time. So, yeah, it's it's good. If you're, if you're between 9 and 11, I think you're doing great. Yeah. Uh, so... <laughs> Let's get um, appearance done, shall we? Three points. We're talking about the colour of the beer, the clarity and the head. For the head, we're talking about the retention, the colour and the texture. So what's it look like to people? This is where it's always handy to top up the glass and liven the head up. get out the phone for this as well. <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think you're going to see the light through it. No, but it might give me an idea of the colour a bit, a little bit more. Uh, Fair enough. Ooh. No, that's blowing out on the uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the colour range here is always is, is from straw to light amber. Sometimes the orangey hue, which is quite interesting, cool. Yeah, hazy off of the paint, clarity, it's not be cloudy or murky. Uh, opacity can add shine to the beer and make the colour seem darker. Uh, mm. call out. Any visible floating hot matter, yeast clumps, other particulates is a fault. Uh, medium to rocky meringue like white head with high to very high retention. So it should look quite nice apart from being able to see through it. Cool. And when it uh, comes to judging appearance, what James did is a very handy trick, um, especially if you're judging in less than ideal environments. Pull your phone out, check, check how um, clear the beer is by trying to shine the light through it. If you're in a dirt corner like um, we have been sometimes, you need that light to actually see what the colour is like. So, David used Verdant Nice for an English bitter once in error. Uh, it works quite well and you get a fair amount of citrus from it. I think we, we mentioned before while we're on colours, there's also a uh, phone app that gives you the colours. All right, obviously it's a screen, therefore it's not perfect, um, but it's, it's a start. And when you complete, when you pass the exam, you also get sent a card, um, mine in my judging box, which is up there somewhere, um, that has the colour definitions on it, um, just to get help you get words to colour that sort of match each other a bit. I think if you download the BJCP, uh, guidelines app as well. I think that will give you the uh, the color range as boxes as well, which is uh, yes. Yeah, some, some of the apps do, depends. There's a different app for each um, uh, platform, obviously, and there's two or three. I think there's only one iOS app, but there's two or three Android ones mm -hmm. of different qualities and features. Yeah, one of the ones I use is the Beer Judge app. And it's actually got an SRM calculator built in. Um, so literally you just point it at the... I've got my finger behind it at the moment so you don't see the state of the room. Um, but you can literally point your camera at the glass and it will tell you the calculated SRM. So that's interesting. But then the difficult bit is turning that SRM into a descriptive colour in your head. So it isn't always as helpful as it might sound. So, so we got? Again for David. It's a whipped cream white head that's retaining well in his glass. Uh, a paint straw coloured beer with no obviously floaters and no evidence of oxidation. Hard, hard not to go for a three. Yeah, I mean, my, my head is, the head on this has faded a bit. There's still a good film and some lacing. Yeah, yeah the lacing is hanging around for dear life, isn't it? It's yeah. going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still loving smelling this beer, actually. I'm finding yeah, it. I keep doing that. It just smells fantastic. <laughs> All right. so, any, any advance well, on a three from anyone? I mean, I can't see anything to knock it down for. Um, I like the comment in the style guide about the opacity can add a shine to the beer, and it certainly does in this case. Uh, not seeing mm. any visible yeast clumps, hop matter, or anything like that. So for me, it would be a full-on three. 
But with homebrew ones of these, it's worth, it's definitely worth keeping an eye out for things floating around in them because it does happen fairly often. Um, this this is another one of those styles that where if you do end up judging it, you end up with some really good beers and some really bad beers and not an awful lot in the middle. Um, it's a hard style to brew well. A question on the style guide on the appearance on this. So the um, the last sentence in it is a medium to rocky meringue like head, uh, and the comma is in a very weird position. So. Uh, I'm wondering whether you'd read that as uh, it's medium to rocky and it has to be meringue-like, or <laughs> it's medium to rocky and meringue-like. I think it's just random punctuation. <laughs> 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 Throw some commas at it. <laughs> yeah, I... So, I, so I, the reason I asked, because I, when I poured this, I, I, I would say it's pillowy, but I wouldn't have said it was uh, meringue-like. It's not got that um, sort of glossy coat to the to the head that you you would get for what i would think of as meringue like it, 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 meringue like is, is a, it's a, a slightly non-standard term i think from mm -hmm. my point of view in that i can make four or five different types of meringue that look very different from each other um, <laughs> which one am i looking at french italian the baked one <laughs> mm. yeah i mean it it seems strange to me because medium to me describes the size, rocky describes the texture, so medium to rocky doesn't seem to make much sense to me. Yeah, I think, I think it's just a slightly odd wording. Most of these having this version had their wording cleared up, but this is a relatively new edition, um, so it probably hasn't gone through the whole process where the rest of them have been tidied up a bit as thoroughly. Um, yeah, I, I sort of read that primarily as medium to large foamy head that lasts well. All right. Um, and Richard says no reason to remove any points. Let's move on then and start drinking this gorgeous this gorgeous beer. Well, what's gorgeous so far? I haven't really been tasting it, so there's, there's still room to be wrong there. So flavour, 20 points. Uh, we're describing the malt, the hops, the fermentation characteristics, balance, finish or aftertaste, and any other flavour characteristics. So in this section, you're thinking all about the flavour rather than mouthfeel, not the things that you feel in your mouth, but what you actually taste. So the style guide says, we're looking for a high to very high fruity hop flavour, same descriptors as given in the aroma, low to medium malt flavour, the same descriptors as in the aroma, Low to medium high perceived bitterness, often masked by the fuller body and soft off dry to medium finish. Hop character in the aftertaste should not be sharp or harsh. Neutral to fruity, uh, fruity? fruity fermentation profile, supportive of the hops, should not be sweet, although high ester levels and lower bitterness may sometimes give that impression. A background alcohol flavour is optional. So again, when you're describing this, especially if you're doing it in, ex in an exam, because the background alcohol flavour has been called out in a style guide, it's good to mention it, even if it's not there. The interesting thing about this compared to, to most examples of this style is it does allow quite a high level of bitterness, uh, which some examples do have, but a lot of the majority are at the lower end. So any thoughts on the flavour? I mean, whilst people are getting their thoughts together, I'd say for me, the, the flavour is certainly following the aroma a lot. Um, most of the things I'm getting in my taste is the things I was picking up and calling out in the, um, in the aroma. So Steve's getting a bitter orange peel in the flavour. I can definitely go with that. Yeah. A um, bit of a pithy bitterness as well. Mm. Yep. I, I was I was carrying on the grapefruit from the uh, the aroma, but yeah, I could, I could go with a sort of bitter orange, sort of several marmalade orange type thing. Mm. Yeah, I think it's definitely clear, more clearly orange to me in the flavour than the aroma, but that pithy citrusness is definitely still there either way. 
and the way that the bitterness progresses, it's sort of it's very powerful quite up front, and then it sort of um, gradually falls away. And you do have like a lingering bitterness, but it's sort of sitting amongst quite a a, a creamy. Um, uh, now that's an interesting one because I've been saying that in in the context of flavour, but creamy is often a, a more of a mouthfeel thing, isn't it? I and it's a in in this case, I think it's a bit of both. Yeah, it's it's if you do if people do use words like creamy in places which aren't mouthfeel, you probably make clear it's a creamy flavour rather mm -hmm. than just creamy, um, just to make clear that you 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 understand that it's different than that. Um, Steve's gone to yeah, that's it pithy and yeah, it's quite dry on the finish. Yeah, I sort of agree. It's got a fairly fairly dry finish. Uh, yeah, not, you know, a lot of breadiness as well towards the finish as the bitterness starts to die away a bit. Well, that could just be me. <laughs> now, if you go with some 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 sort of lingering graininess, that doughy yeah. thing from the aroma that people were describing, I think it's still there a bit. Um, probably, probably heading towards sort of a white bready thing, not quite bread crust yet. Yeah, I'm getting almost um, a little bit doughy as well now in the flavour, mm -hmm. and um, that piney, that piney sort of flavours there on the uh, aftertaste as well. So David says tropical fruits dominate the initial flavour. Uh, with that bitter grapefruit coming through. The moderate pine flavour moves in next with an unobtrusive malt sweetness coming through before a moderate hot bitterness. Yeah, some good descriptors yeah. there. Yeah, I, I like the, the moderate. is probably where I put the hot bitterness. It's, it, it's high for the, the UK's classic examples of this style, the normal, your, your, our other local breweries. Um, but it's still... It's not much higher than moderate. It's not, not up there with the, 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 the big West Coast IPAs. So there is a little bit of yeast character there for me as well. Um, so quite a fruity um, thing, I think. But it's... Um, so it's it's heading in the direction of foam bananas, but it's not foam bananas. It's like if, if, you, could, if you could get like a foam passion fruit, then uh, maybe it would be foam passion fruit. <laughs> Foam yeah, yeah, yeah. If if anyone starts making those, let me know because that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, fo foam bananas are a classic descriptor of beer flavour because they are the they are they are right, so I'm on acetate, mm -hmm. uh, which is the banana flavour from yeast derived banana flavour usually in Defervisor. Uh, so from Steve, I think the pithy orange develops into grapefruit on the finish. I can I can go with that. Mm -hmm. And from David, we've got also getting the taste of the alcohol at the end. You know this is 6.5. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I do now. <laughs> um, Most of these tend to be that sort of region. The alcohol ABV range for this is 6 to 9. For the style, um, yeah, they do tend to be fairly pokey, mm. and quite, they usually hide the alcohol quite well. Um, I think I agree there is some alcohol detectable. There's a little bit of pepperiness at the end yeah. there, um, mm. but not yeah. to a huge level. Yeah, I mean, I was wondering if it was a bit higher, but I hadn't thought to look at the can. So yeah. So it mentions in here as it, it mentions in here as well about should not be sweet. Um, I, I I I've certainly heard others, and I certainly experience a bit of a difference between hop sweetness when you've got this level of hops uh, in a beer and um, and uh, malt sweetness. Um, so I. It seems like a bit of an odd one to call out as should not be sweet because I think that is a bit of a defining characteristic of these. It's just not the the malt sweetness that's coming forward. I think that's trying to push the ones that are more to have to put it ice cream um, mm. to into, into their into a separate style. 
Um, because mm-hmm. yeah, you do you do get examples of this that are very very sweet. Um, but I think think with this 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 is this is a it could be it could certainly be sweeter than this and less bitter. Um, but uh, yeah, there are some that go very sweet. Um, what the I yeah, just the, looked at the commercial examples, and I have to say, all of those appear to be American. I can't see any international ones on there. So that's yeah. also worth bearing in mind that the beers we're used to for a style in one country might not be what they're necessarily getting in the US as well, where mm. a lot of these guides are written. Yeah, I think I think I've had the the Hill Farms before, and that that's not dissimilar to this. It, it probably dropped the bitterness a little bit, but it's in the same ballpark. But yeah, I've none of the others. I'm not, I'm not familiar with any of the rest. Trillium? No, I haven't had that trillium. I don't think. Yeah, I, I really want trilliums come up quite often as examples, so I want to try some of their stuff sometime. They're, they're a really good brewery. They've been there for a couple of times. Um, I think I think I've had some of their beers. There may have been either the, the Beaver Town thing in Central London or a Cloudwater's thing. Yeah, I was yeah. gutted. I wanted to go to the Beaver Town thing, and then they stopped doing it. Yeah, these were all in the before times before, before we were allowed to go to beer festivals regularly. <laughs> Right, so hop character and the aftertaste should not be sharp or harsh. Anyone getting anything like that? We haven't heard anyone talk about it. But um, if it says it should not be, then you should be commenting on whether it is or not. Um, in our comments, do you say sort of sweet and sour sweetness? Yeah, I'll probably go more of sweet and bitter sweetness. There's a little bit of tartness there as well sort of but i, I tend towards it being a balance of sweet and sweet and bitter um and and the sort of dryness from having pulled most of the sugar out well, interesting uh, bug there i'll have to let him know it's uh putting the um url encoded version of the ampersand in the <laughs> in the <laughs> chat yes, message no, exactly what's happened there <laughs> Yeah, um, unfortunately, when you've been in software development long enough, you've done, you've made these mistakes, so you know exactly what they are. <laughs> um, and then, out of interest, what would you consider as good examples of this style from the UK, with the obvious exception of this one, as we haven't decided its marks yet? Um, <laughs> Verdant, even Sharks? Yeah, there's a few a few Verdants. Going back, a few of the Cloud Waters are probably pretty good examples, depending on what they're brewing at the moment. Because they never brew the same thing twice, <laughs> or very rarely do they. They have their regulars, but as others yeah. are, they just keep brewing random stuff. Um, who else brews these? They uh, some does some quite good ones. I think Track have some as well. Yeah, probably. Um, I think they've started have going done into some as well. Uh, and uh, Track have started going into what they're calling uh, uh, gold top uh, IPAs, which are. Um, this sort of beer, but with lactose in it. But only a um, very little amount of lactose, I think, is their, is their point of calling it gold salt, relative mm. to the, the, the ice cream ones. The, 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 some of those are the, some of those gold top ones are the few lactose beers I can actually stand, um, with the exception of the, the sweet stouts, which can be quite nice. But um, are there any other? Did anyone know any good? Who we got? Where is everybody from? The ones from from their region. We sort of covered. Manchester in the southwest. No. Yeah, I'm quite opinionated on lactose in beer. I mean, a milk stout, yeah, but most other things, I think you just um, <laughs> being unfair to people who are lactose intolerant. <laughs> Worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's so hard doing this because um, normally when I'm judging beer, I just start mentally calling out everything I'm getting in the beer, and it's so hard not to just start saying it all. I think we've got most of the things in from uh, the people in chat. Hmm. Yeah, so let's just go over... All right, I'll go over the... Um, Style guide once more saying what I'm getting, what I'm not. So high to very high fruity hop flavour. Yeah, definitely getting that. 
Same descriptions as aroma, yep. Low to medium malt flavour, it's it's there, it's more prominent than in the aroma. Um, so yeah, I'd say it hits low. Low to medium high perceived bitterness. For me, it's probably coming in about a medium, it's hiding it quite well, but it's there. Uh, often masked by the fuller body and soft off dry to medium finish. Hop character should not be sharp or harsh. It's got a little bit of bite in the aftertaste. Um, yeah. It it's not it's not what I'll call sharp or harsh, but it's got a little bit of bite for sure. Uh, neutral to fruity fermentation. It's fruity. How much of that's from the yeast and the fermentation? How much of it is from the hops? It's very hard to tell when you've got very high. Uh, or intense hop aromas and flavours. But if it's from fermentation, it is definitely supportive of the hops here. Should not be sweet. There's a little bit of sweetness to it, but overall I'd say it finishes a little dry, so it's fine for me. High ester levels and lower bitterness may sometimes give that impression. Is that what I'm getting? Possibly. Background alcohol flavour is optional. Well, there's a little bit of alcohol there. Um, so for me, it's hitting the mercs on flavour. What's everyone else thinking and what are you scoring it? And remember, for flavour, we're talking out of 20 points. Yeah, interestingly, I had a can of this probably a week back when we were thinking about what style we were going to call this. And I was getting a much higher level of the sort of hot bite in it. Um, I think this this is one of the, 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 the brewery's early beers. And I think there might be some variation, uh, either that or if you disturb the can, uh, you get hops in it, maybe a little bit of hot matter in the bottom of it. Um, How have you uh, kept yours as well? Has it been in the fridge or? Yeah. Our, our dirty secret is that most of our beers end up on the shelves. Uh, so we've, we've simulated this one getting lost in the post until last <laughs> weekend. <laughs> Uh, from David with an example, there's a brewery in Anai called Fermageddon that does some lovely Nipahs and Hilltown, owned by the same families as the ones that own Getta Brewed, did one for a festival that was amazing. Fermageddon, I have heard of. I've heard some good things, but I don't think I've actually tried any of their beer. I think I may have had something from Hilltown at some point, possibly brought over to work at some brewery thing. Um, but it, well, it certainly wasn't a, a New England but yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, that's good to know. Um, there must be a London brewery that does a good one, but I just don't know. I haven't been down there drinking beer for for ages. And you can always get some from the Cloudwater Tap in London. <laughs> Have you found out if you can make it to Brewcon yet, Rich? I'm still working on um, childcare for that, but yeah, probably. Probably. Uh, you know, a lot of people owe us childcare. It's just finding the right look if you can manage it. <laughs> How about you, James? Lucy, are you going to be able to make it to Brucon? I think we'd be there if it was in Leeds again, but um, yeah, no, London's a long no, way to travel from Manchester yeah. <laughs> in the, uh, when the rates are so high at the moment. But, yeah. Yeah. yeah, tell me about it. I remember going up for the Leeds one, and it, it was a long way from South Wales where I'm based. Right, oh, yeah. So... Oh, this could cool. Little child is on that. Uh, his brewery's that. We should know. Oh, I thought he was referring to childcare. I thought he was. <laughs> I was confused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, middle child. Yeah, Fraser's good as gold. He's always <laughs> done good IPAs. Fair, fair play to him. He always wins everything, so. <laughs> I still remember one of the very early competitions I judged. I was, um, I had finished my flight and I was standing around chatting to Ali and he went running off and grabbed a bottle, brought it back and he's like, try this. And it was Fraser's Death Star and it was absolutely amazing. And I've loved that beer ever since. So I always pester him when uh, he says he's done it again to get some of it. Excellent. Right, so anyone else want to give their scores before I do? Oh, Steve's just come in with an 18 out of 20. So there we go. H2O has finally picked up the chat. 
It's supposed to be on a 10 second refresh, but sometimes it feels like it goes a minute before it catches up with the chat. So if you're giving it an 18 out of 20, just think what's the reasons you've taken those two off and does it tally with what you've already said about the beer? But then bear it in mind for when it comes to your feedbacks uh, in the section later. Death's done, now you're talking. <laughs> <It's been laughs> cool. Yeah, definitely a cracking beer. So Dave's going for a 17, dropping a couple for the slight harshness at the end. Yeah, that's valid. You probably, probably want to make sure you're clear that you're thinking it's maybe hot harshness or something like that. Yeah, I mean, certainly when it comes to giving your feedback in the overall impression section, you want to be calling out what you think or feel has caused that harshness so that you can advise how to make the beer more appropriate for the style next time. Although David says he may be the one being harsh. Um, I don't know. I mean, for me, I think I'll go 17 or 18 on this. Um, yeah, I like that. Yeah. yeah, I'd be in that region as well. It's there's a little bit of the hop, hop, hoppy burniness almost, the harshness perhaps, and I'm still getting a tiny bit of grassiness, but they're they're, they're very very low. Hmm. Couple of points off for the little bit hot burn on the finish, says Steve. Yeah, fair play. Okay, so mouthfeel then. Five points, so we're not going to stay too long on this one. We're talking about body, carbonation, warmth, creaminess, astringency, and other palate sensations. So again, just to keep reminding you, we're talking about what you're getting, what type of it, and how much of it. So if, for instance, I'm not saying it is there, but to give an example, if we were talking about astringency, are we talking an overpowering harsh astringency? Are we talking just a little bit of astringency in the finish? Try and hone in a bit on your descriptors so that people who aren't drinking the beer can read your descriptions of the beer and taste it and see it. And that's, that's the level of description you've, you're looking at. So here we are looking for medium to medium full body, medium carbonation, smooth, no harshness, light warm foxtrol, should not have a creamy or viscous mouthfeel, an acidic twang or a raw starch texture. Yeah, the the, the raw starch texture is a is a yeah, he's, he's pushing a hint towards how people used to brew these by chucking the flour in. <laughs> yeah, okay. raw uncooked flour, <laughs> bung a bag in to just make it hazy as anything so steve's come back with soft and juicy with low carbonation you know probably those are a mix of mouthfeel almost flavory things low carbonation yeah whether it was low carbonation when we first opened it is an interesting question i'll see what everyone else remembers yeah i'll, I think I'll down this more. and find out it was much more yeah <laughs> carbonated when it was initially opened yeah. yeah, more along the medium sort of uh, yeah. carbonation. I, I, so certainly when it had a head that was an inch high uh, in this glass. <laughs> yeah. uh, I do get a slight creamy texture to it, and the viscosity is quite... It's, it's pleasant, but it's... It, yeah, whether or not it's just style. I think it's fairly light to start with, but the, the long finish certainly yeah. gets more creamy. It's certainly got a lot more of that herbal and piney when you first open it than it does after it's been in the glass a while. Mm. They've just come back with medium body with low carbonation and medium level of creaminess. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say medium carbonation when you just open the can. Yeah. And this is, this is an interesting one, other than whether it is worth just going for a little mouthfeel sample right at the beginning. I'd say to just judge it off, off look early on because you can see what carbonation looks like, but there's no reason you can't just give it a go. Uh, all that's been said about the carbonation, I think there's a little bit of effervescence there for me as well. It's quite tingly on the tongue, but some of that could be uh, in conjunction with the hot bite that I'm getting to. Yeah, it's a bit like carbonation. Yeah, I think it's in com combination. I mean, normally for the effervescence, I'd expect a bit more than medium. Mm -hmm. 
Um, it could be that there's a little bit of um, carbonic acid in there when you first pour it. Yeah. And I'm still getting a little bit of that. I think loose cool out there on, on, on like carbonated water is mm. quite a good one. I'm getting a little bit of that sort of carbonic yeah. acidity. Right. Right. And sort of almost heading towards a slightly astringent, but it's, it's once again down at a very low level. Very smooth, almost chewy. So harshness is called out in the style guide. Anyone getting any harshness or light warmth from it? I think there's a little bit of alcohol there for me. Um, but and as I say, the heading towards very light touch of astringency, which is probably what they're calling out with harshness. Mm -hmm. Once again, though, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of the wording in this description. Mm. Uh, I no, I mean, we did put nice. together a provisional style guide for it based on British English language and descriptions, but it's <laughs> unfortunately been reworked quite significantly before it got into the final thing by the look of it. Uh, so where were we? Would you say spritzy, asks Steve Cole. Spritzy is a fun word that does occur every now and then in the, um, uh, in, in the descriptions. Usually, yeah, uh, when... Describing well, what's a comparison, um, something I'm going to have when they're comparing it to like sparkling wine or something. Yeah, um, yeah I could probably go there. Uh, Dave's going to have a little light warmth, which yeah, I think I could agree with. Uh, so, what else is called out in the style guide? The beer should not have a creamy or viscous mouthfeel, an acidic twang or raw starch. So, anyone getting any of that? I'm personally, I'm getting a kind of smooth velvety type mouthfeel. I'm not getting what I'll call creamy because creamy to me involves um, like a mouth coating type feel that I, w I wouldn't say I'm getting here. Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've mm. written that down on my <laughs> scribblings yeah. as, I've got as creamy, but I understand what you mean. I, I've, I've said almost creamy. I've said that yeah. it's uh, sort of medium to full bodied, uh, almost creamy. So it's it's again, it's one of those that's heading in that direction, but it's yeah, yeah. not full on. I could go with that. All right, so let's whilst you're just getting your last descriptions in, let's also get the scores in. Uh, we've got not long left, and we've still got to do overall impression. So at five points, what do you think? How does this compare to the style guide? Medium to medium full bodied, medium carbonation, smooth, no harshness, optional light warmth, not have a creamy or vicious. Uh, I want to say vicious then, viscous <laughs> mouthfeel. That's the running after. <laughs> An acidic twang or raw starch texture. And yes, I have had some beers that have got a very vicious mouthfeel. <laughs> but those are usually the West Coast ones that are trying to be a thousand by like you. <laughs> Those are the I ones, get, yeah. I get about a four. It's pre pretty bob on, but there is that viscosity that's not supposed to be there that I do get. Yeah. Steve's going that. Three scores, well, yeah, I'd probably be three or four. Well, depending on what, I'd probably be close to four, probably. Uh, heading up, knocking off, yeah, for a little bit for the uh, sort of creamy, almost creaminess, and a little bit for teeny hint of astringency but really they're both not really a whole point so one seems about right yeah i think i'll be about a four as well it's it's not it's not bang on what's in the style <laughs> guide but it's not fair off it either uh, steve apparently wants to go for 3.5 <laughs> yeah no hard marks no. <laughs> I mean, in uh, theory, it depends. If you've given a half somewhere else, it works out. So, but normally, no, we wouldn't. There, there, there lies madness, as is people start going to third marks or irrational. <laughs> yeah, so, true. But then again, it puts the problem onto the stewards to do the adding up then, doesn't it? 
<laughs> it, it's one of those where you keep it in mind for if you were on the fence in one of the other yeah. sections. Yeah. You'd, Definitely. You'd and I, I'll put the fight. We're not doing final scores yet, but I'll put the card up because it does really help you when you're trying to fall into one of those brackets there. If you're like right on the cusp between one of them and you think, no, it doesn't quite deserve that one. You can then take that half back off again in your head and knock it down to the other one. Okay. Um, so, yeah, four for me. So, uh, 3.725 from David Farron. <laughs> That's getting to the point where it's like 98.25% of the stats to two decimal places are made up on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, overall impression. 10 points. Overall drinking pre pleasure. Uh, yeah, you can tell I've had more than one of these cans now, can't you? Overall drinking pleasure associated with the entry. Uh, suggestions for improvement. So this is your money maker section. It's worth 10 points, but this is where you give the feedback to the brewer. And for most brewers, that's what they've entered a competition for. They want to know how to make the beer better or more to style next time so that they can walk away with a medal. Uh, any thoughts? So sometimes these are uh, the, the challenges with where you've got a, a good beer is finding much to write in this section apart from send me another bottle, please. Um, well, which, which is always valid. <laughs> um, um, there used to be a checkbox for sending me the recipe. <laughs> Um, don't think it's on many of the score sheets anymore. Um, no, I haven't seen it on any of the recent ones anyway. Yeah. And did anyone ever send you the recipe just from ticking that uh, box? Uh, no. Literally, the only times I've got recipes sent me is from the Welsh, where I was the organiser, and I'm sending them a congratulatory email saying, well done for winning. Please can I have the recipe? And every single time someone's come back, yeah, sure, here you go. <laughs> that's, that's the sort of way to just publish it, stick it on the site. Um. Well, part of me wants to. I mean, it's like um, in uh, BCOEM, the normal yeah. one that most of the clubs use, you have got the option to ask for a recipe when people enter beers. Yeah. and. Part of me thinks that's a faff for people trying to enter, but part of me yeah. thinks if I really did want to write the book that's been in the back of my head for a long time, which is a rewrite of Designing Great Beers, which is yeah, sadly right. very out of date now, yeah. that would be a great way to collect the data. Yeah. I've noticed on that what people have trying to put some comments on this, that the late newest versions of that have got... Um, Electronic scoring enabled by default. Yeah. Um, which I'd, I'd, I'd love to try for competition. We did PDF score sheets at the first Worcester comp, and it worked surprisingly well. Yeah. Um, I, I felt sorry for the judges who were trying to fill them in on touchpad devices like phones or tablets, though. Um, but I also felt quite nervous having my laptop there with all the beer around. That's that's why I've picked up a tablet with a keyboard. Yeah, I used <laughs> to love my old Microsoft Surface for just that reason. In fact, more than one year, I ran the entire Welsh off a of Microsoft Surface. Yeah. So overall, it's an eight for David. He likes this style. It's a good example. A little bit of bite from the hops that might be changed by altering when the dry hop is added. Yeah, I don't think that, that's a good, good, good set of feedback. I'd possibly, possibly, my version of that would be, it might be altered by changing when the dry hop is removed. But mm -hmm. that's just my opinion of the difference. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of with you there. I was thinking more dry hop duration, perhaps, and quantity rather than when it's added. But then again, if you add it later in conditioning, you'll probably achieve the same result. Six yeah. of one, half a dozen of another. As usual, we're, 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 we're making guesses of what the brewer's process was, um, which is basically what you do in this section. Um, mm. So a lot of hedging your language is always quite useful here. 
Yeah, but then again, it also pays to be opinionated as a beer judge. It's like you, you don't achieve, you never achieve fame and notoriety. But you, but you're, if you are prepared to stand on a subject and say this needs changing because of blah blah blah, then that feedback's normally a lot better than received than oh maybe change this next time. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think there was an ifs and buts in there. But, mm. uh, uh, what we got from Steve? Uh, it's very pleasant to drink and very true to style. The only thing that lets it down is, yeah, a little hot burn on the finish, perhaps a little less time on the dry hop. So, yeah, an eight from there. So, James, you were about to say something. Yeah, I was going to say the other thing that I would add is that this is straight down the middle for this style as well. It doesn't lean too heavily into the fruity side of it or into the sort of heavily bitter side to it, which uh, a lot of these do. Um, and I think this comes back to a thing we mentioned uh, uh, perhaps on last week's episode, um, that you risk sometimes there as not standing out amongst the bunch. Um, it's, it's a very safe uh, representation of this beer, this yeah. style. Yeah. Yes. It takes me back to one of the first comps I actually judged at. After the 16th, I think it was American Amber in a row, I was pay praying something was either very good or very bad about the next one. Um, you're always looking for that thing that makes this one beer stand out from all the others that are average or bang down the middle of the line, if you know what I mean. So, yes, if you're looking to win medals, it does pay to pick a direction and push the boundaries a bit in that one, just so you stand out from all the other entries that otherwise have scored more or less the same thing. But when mm. it comes to a mini boss, you want your beer to stick out from the others. The so thing I'm going to put... This is the uh, first style, uh, style guide that I've seen mentioned, Biotransformation. Um, it's down there in the uh, characteristic ingredients. It talks about biotransformation yep. of hop oils, uh, adding a depth of fruit complexity. Um, I mean, yeah. from mem. Oh, sorry, go on, Rich. Those, those sections tend to be more free text, um, and yeah, they're, they're, they're they're useful. The more describing to to the brewer what they're going for, what they're making, what they're likely to have done, as opposed to the judge. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, if you remember back our. Our friends at Cloudwater did their pair of them with one was biotransformed and one wasn't, which was quite an interesting experiment a long time ago, surprisingly long time ago. I mean, from memory, this is the style that brought biotransformation to the homebrew in, uh, community, at least. I'm not saying that pro brewers weren't doing it before that and very well aware of it. But before this style, it was something that was never really talked about in homebrew or competition judging. So, yeah, Rich, um, your overall impression? I reckon this is an eight. But it's, 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 I'd, be, I'd be asking whether it's eight or a nine. Um, I think eight's right. Um, with yeah, the, the, I'll be looking at a little bit around the the the, 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 the hop schedule. Um, Probably, probably the, primarily the dry hop schedule to get some feedback on it. Um, that would be primarily the area I'd be looking at um, for that. It says really reading back through the, all the sections to remember if there's anything else that was significant. Fair play. Um, yeah, for me, it was a little bit of hop bite. Um, perhaps a little bit more malt character in the aroma. Uh, they were the main things that stuck out to me as not quite meeting the style guide. Generally, other than that, this beer's hit the points all the way along. Yeah, actually, the other bit I'll be calling out was, was a, little, a little bit of grassiness, but that's also hop schedule mm. related. I mean, I think James hit it more or less bang on with it, more or less right down the middle for everything. So, I mean, you can't really fault it, but against another example that might um, push one of the boundaries, it might lose out in a mini boss or a boss. And it's, it's a, as, as Rich was mentioning right at the start, this is a new brewery mm -hmm. and they need to sort of set their bar. 
and they have set that quite solidly here. They've yeah. set it very um, high. Yeah. yeah, it's not like he's a new brewer, though. <laughs> it's sure. one, one of the most original set of the, the current generation. I mean, is it all on new equipment, or are they cuckoo? I don't know their background. New kit. So they're in, they're in the arch that Track used to be in. I don't think it's Track's old kit. I think. So, I mean, even then, sort of, even if you're an experienced brewer, brewing new brewery, new kit, new location, new water, it's very much a case of they've set the bear quite high on this. Yeah. Mm. All right, so let's hear people's final scores then before the panel gives their final verdict. Where do you put this out of 50 points if you add your points up, if you've been keeping track? Or if you haven't, then an estimation of where you think it would be. 44 from Steve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, going, going by the numbers people have been, been putting in, that sounds about right. Yeah, any more. And uh, yeah, 42 to 43 from David. Oh, what well, the last scores in? Should we, should we say what we've got to? Did you have you added yours up, to and Lucy? Yeah, I got forty four. Which, yeah, it's very, very good beer. Very, very nice. It's not quite stout, but it's only like minorly out. Yeah. So the the malt aroma, um, bit of grassiness. Um, yeah, it's nice. I drink a lot of it. <laughs> yeah, forty three for me. It's it's uh, right on that edge between uh, excellent and outstanding. And yeah, the thing that keeps it from the outstanding is that sort of, uh, yeah, like we've said, slight, slight hot bite, uh, slightly off on the malt character, um, and and it's straight down the middle. There's nothing that really pushes this out into something that would really stand out from the crowd. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm in the upper 43. Uh, Richard on the trace, I didn't keep track, but we'll go to the top end of Excel, which is about the same sort of region. Sarah? Yeah, um, I was thinking 43, 44. It's right at the top end of... Where were we? It's right at the top end of Excellent. It's not quite pushing over into Outstanding. But it's a commercial beer. It's not trying to get 50 points against the BJCP style guide. That is not a consideration that enters into the mind of a commercial brewery. Heck, most of them don't even call it the style it is. Um, <laughs> Brew it first. <laughs> yeah, but this, it's a lovely beer. I am very glad that Beer Moth suggested it because I hadn't tried it before, and I'm very glad I have. So, well done to Sure Shot. Yeah, definitely. And, yeah, they've, they've, they've carried on with, with some really good beer since this one, so... Keep an eye out for them. We'll do. Any passing remarks from anyone before we finish off? Well, we'll be on the uh, other side of the screen next week. Uh, so thank you very much for having us once again. And, uh, yeah, it's it's a cracking beer to, uh, to have had. No, you're very welcome, and your insights have been invaluable. It's nice, I think, for people not to just hear... Um, the views of Rich and me. I mean, we've done this together so many times. It's like we may as well just finish finish each other's lines half the time. Um, so having that extra um, impression coming in is very valuable. Um, OK, so beer next week, I think we just said, was the Roddenbach Grand Crew. Mm. So I hope you can join us next <laughs> week and uh, we'll see you then. Thanks a lot for joining us. Remember Hi. to hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching Dove Cat Brewing.